Today we're going to be using the substitution method in taking the antiderivative of these functions. So let's go ahead and start problem number one. We have the integral of x all over x squared plus 4 dx. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify my integral function into x dx all over x squared plus 4. And this way I'll be able to see my variable u which is x squared plus 4 and if I take the derivative of u which is 2x dx I'll be seeing that x dx is identical to my derivative function over here. So in this case I only need to get rid of 2 by x dx and I'm going to do that by multiplying both sides by one half. So now x dx is one half du and I can replace it with my new integral function because x squared plus 4 is now going to be my u. So my new integral function will be one half du all over u. So x dx, x dx is now one half du and this is now my u function. So now I have a consistent um, integral function with respect to u. So by using my constant rule, so one half will be outside my integral function and I'm going to integrate du over u. And by the integral rule, um, the derivative of 1 over u or 1 over x is ln x dx. So this will change into 1 half times um, ln of u plus c. And if you want to be consistent with your original function, which is with respect to x, I can change u back to x squared plus 4. So I have 1 half ln of x squared plus 4 plus the constant c. And this is now my antiderivative of problem number 1. Now, some version of the problem may give you this as an answer, and they're just, this, just the same because we're simply multiplying 1 half to the function ln x squared plus 4. So that's for problem number 1. Now for problem number 2, we'll integrate 2x, I mean 3x plus 2. raised to 2.4 dx. So here, this is pretty straightforward because we know that u is usually inside the parentheses or inside the radical. So u is now 3x plus 2. And if we take the derivative of u with respect to uh, this variable, 3x is going to be 3 dx. And if you'll notice, we have dx over here. And this is our new u function raised to 2.4 so now all we need to do is to get rid of the constant 3 by dx so that it will be just dx in our integral function so multiply by one third so this cancels out so I have one third du equals dx so if I'm going to modify my integral function it will now be an in integral of 1 over 3 um, u to the 2.4 at yung and we'll write du as our derivative function because dx is now du. So to use the integral rule, since I have a constant of one third, one third will go outside and I'll have u to the 2.4 du. And using the derivative rule, 2.4 plus 1 is 3.4. So I have 1 third times u to the 3.4 all over 3.4 plus c. And if you want to simplify this further, 3 
times 3.4 is 10.2. So we'll have 10.2 as our denominator and u raised to 3.4 plus c. Since we want to be consistent with our original integral function, u is returned to 3x plus 2 raised to 3.4 whole over 10.2 plus c. So this is for problem number 2. Now for problem number 3, we have a combination of functions like e to the u and a trig function sine theta d theta. So for number 3, I have e to the cosine theta sine theta d theta. Now I will modify my function because now it looks a little bit confusing because there's so many terms in my function so I will rearrange them and separate each function like so so that I'll see my function u better and in this case I will set cosine theta as my u so u is cosine theta and if you take the derivative of u this is negative sine theta d theta and from my modified function I have sine theta and d theta but the negative is still here in my derivative function so I will put it on the other side by multiplying both sides by negative 1 so I have negative du equals sine theta d theta so now it looks identical so my new function is now integral of e to the u times negative du or negative e to the u du. Now the integral of e to the u du from our integral rule is just e to the u plus c so I have negative e to the u plus c or negative e to the cosine theta plus c. So this is how we solve some uh, um, integral functions using substitution method. Now let's answer the last problem, number four. I have the integral of x plus 1 all over x squared plus 2x raised to 3 dx. Now I'm going to modify my function right away instead of writing it this way I'll write it out as x plus 1 dx all over x squared plus 2x raised to 3 so it's all about how you write your function sometimes that it makes mathematics a lot easier so here I have my parentheses which is x squared plus 2x I will set it as my u function so u is equal to x squared plus 2x. Now the derivative of that is 2x plus 2 dx. And in this case, my numerator doesn't look the same as my derivative of u. However, if I factor out the 2, it will look exactly as x plus 1. So the derivative of u can be modified into x plus 1. 2 is outside dx. And now, we have an identical function. The only problem is 2, so I will multiply both sides by 1 half. And 1 half du is now my x plus 1 dx. So by modifying my original function, I can now rewrite this as 1 half. This becomes du all over u raised to the third power. So by using the integral rule, constant rule of 1 half outside the integral function, and I have u raised to negative 3 du. And the derivative or antiderivative of u to the negative 3, you add 1 to the exponent, so it's 1 half 
u to the negative 2 all over negative 2 plus c. So by simplifying your function, you'll have 1 half, or you can multiply 1 half and negative 1 half, and 1 over u squared plus c. So this is negative, so we'll have negative 1 over 4 times 1 over x squared plus 2x squared plus c. And if you want to uh, further simplify this, we can combine these two together and we'll have negative 4x squared plus 2 squared plus c. So this is how we uh, take the antiderivative of some function using the substitution method.